Hi everyone, my name is Terry, and welcome to my channel, The Pink Don't Well Problem, and a new episode in the in the Discourse series. I know it's been a while since I've done a video. I had planned to do one a couple weeks ago, and unfortunately Hurricane Fiona had other plans for me, and I really did not expect to be without power and or internet for a whole week. So I had to clean up after that and do a lot of work that I missed when the power was out. So, better late than never, here we are. Newcastle University in England has done a study about women's access to outdoor fitness spaces. And this is important. I've iterated this numerous times in numerous ways here on YouTube and, and a lot on Twitter that fitness is a feminist issue. And this is one of the biggest reasons why. As many of you know, one of the biggest barriers to accessing fitness spaces is the cost. You have to pay for a gym membership or pay for classes, things like that. And the big argument against that is, well, you don't have to pay for anything. Just go for a walk or a jog outside. I wouldn't say this puts the nail in the coffin of that argument, but it certainly takes the air out of its tires a fair bit. I'm mixing metaphors. Just go with it. A number of interesting tidbits and statistics and things in this short article. This is not the whole study. This is just the BBC reporting of it. The biggest takeaway from this, and you can see it's actually highlighted here in the subtitle, is that 80% of women reported feeling unsafe in parks, especially when it's getting dark. That's a number that people like myself who've worked in the intersections of gender and fitness have speculated on quite a few times, but it is really nice to have the research to back up an actual solid number on that. Now, there are, of course, detractors. You can scroll down and read the comments and apparently BBCs, just like the comments on CBC here in Canada, it's full of trolls and nasty people. So I don't recommend you read it. However, I did skim through it. And of course, there were people saying, oh, that's just fear. It's unbased. You know, that's just women being paranoid and hysterical and those kinds of comments. Note to self, I have to do a video on the meaning of hysteria because it keeps coming up. There's two problems with that. One, I don't think it's unfounded at all. And two, even if it is unfounded, it still means it's operating as a barrier for women to accessing outdoor fitness activities. There have been numerous attacks, some of them very high profile, very large news stories in, you know, the last couple of years coming from England let alone other countries around the world where women have been attacked while jogging. It is not an unfounded fear. But even if it was an unfounded fear, it still operates as a barrier for women to access fitness spaces. And that's for me in my area of study, my area of research is the interesting thing. Whether there's an actual legitimate threat every time a woman steps outside her door to go for a jog is not the fact that matters. The fact that matters is that it's stopping women from going outside their door to go jogging. So this functions on different levels. And unfortunately, the people who are saying that this is a non-issue and that it's a false fear and all of that kind of thing are not the people who are being directly affected by this. Either they're not exercisers or they're not women or both. We have a phrase for that here in Eastern Canada. It's called talking out your arse. So don't do it. And it all boils down to the fact that it doesn't matter how many times you go jogging or walking and you don't experience SA. Just a little note here, YouTube likes to block and age restrict and do other nasty things to videos that spell out what SA stands for, hence calling it SA. And it doesn't matter the severity of it, whether it's cat calling where you're not actually physically approached, right up to full-blown SA type of events. It doesn't matter how many times it doesn't happen. It matters that there is that chance it could happen one time. And that is life altering, quite often life ruining for a lot of people. You can't blame women who are the primary target for that kind of behavior in those kinds of circumstances for wanting to protect themselves. As is typical, the people who are saying this is not a legit fear are not the ones who are being targeted. Now, coincidentally, another article came up and this one is another one from the UK, this time from The Guardian. This actually goes back to 2017. What's interesting about this coming up on the same day, five years later, uh, same day as the other article, is that it establishes this is not new in the discourse. This is before the recent murders of Sarah Everard in England or Ashley Murphy in Ireland. This is not new. We've already had discourse about this. What I do like particularly about this article from The Guardian is that they look at the financial toll that this takes. When women can't walk safely for exercise, for going to and from work, going to and from the grocery store, anything like that. They have to either own a car, which is expensive, or they have to take a cab in order to get back and forth safely. And even taking a cab or any ride service, an Uber, a Lyft, even a bus, really, these all have not only expenses related to them, 
but they still have dangers of being out in public, especially again, after dark. And you know what? The after dark thing is another thing I've heard people argue. Oh, that's, that's a, a false flag. It's not really a concern. You can be assaulted any time of day. Yes. Yes, you can. But it's less safe after dark because there are fewer witnesses. There are fewer bystanders who might be willing to intervene. Not that that happens often enough. These perpetrators do this after dark so that nobody can identify them. I really should not have had to explain that, but again, the argument keeps coming up. So yes, there's definitely an additional cost to being a woman who has to operate outside of her own home or workplace after dark. I've talked about these things in other videos, so I'm going to put some links down below and you can get some of the backgrounder on what I've already said about this. And I think I'll probably touch on these topics again in future videos. I'm repeating topics, but they need to be repeated. These are still problems we see in society. Uh, they're still affecting people and people still want to talk about it. And obviously journalists want to still write about it. And researchers still want to research it. It's good to be back. I hope you like this video. Please put some comments down below and click the thumbs up button, click the share button and send this out on some other social media channels. And by the way, since my last video, I reached 500 subscribers here on YouTube. I now have the community tab on my channel. So in between videos, I'll be posting some information there. Thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, I've got some links down below to some other videos. Please give those a look. And I've got links there for where you can find me on social media, as well as my Patreon, if you'd like to send me a dollar a month to support the work that I'm doing here. And of course, as always, lift heavy, fight the patriarchy, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.